Hi everyone, it's Adam here with Web Starts, and today I want to talk a little bit about WordPress. Now, uh, one, uh, let me kind of give a little precursor before I get started into talking about uh, WordPress. One of the problems with the human condition is that we will go to great lengths to justify an opinion or a decision that we made. In fact, uh, there's lots of studies that show that we will find the, the truth in things based on what we already believe. In other words, we'll just try to reinforce a decision that we've already made and we'll actually go out and find facts that support our decision rather than look at things from a different perspective or um, possibly admit that we're wrong. So today I want to talk a little bit about WordPress and I don't want to get the big community of WordPress lovers too mad at me. I mean, I do appreciate WordPress for what it is and normally I wouldn't mention one of our competitors directly on this video, but uh, there are some problems with WordPress. And if you know a little bit of history about WordPress, you'll know why it has some strengths and why it has some weaknesses. Now let me start by saying it has some strengths. WordPress is a great platform if you're trying to build a blog. Uh, originally when WordPress came out, and I believe it was 2008, it was based on uh, another PHP project that was strictly focused on building a blog and or at the time it was called a web log we didn't just say blog we said web blog at the time but uh, nonetheless WordPress became a great source to create a blog and that's like a series of posts and it kind of expanded from there because it's open source and all these developers have jumped in and and they've contributed to making this WordPress community and now the, the kind of everyday common person hears a lot that, hey, WordPress is a great, great way to build a website. And what I'm going to do in this video is give you 10 reasons why that's just not true. WordPress is not meant to build a website. It's meant to build a blog. And I'm gonna cover the limitations or the weaknesses that you'll see if you try to build your website uh, with WordPress compared to some of the other options out there like Web Starts. So the number one thing, and this is always an annoyance for me, is that you need to buy uh, web hosting somewhere. Uh, you can sign up at WordPress.com and build an account there, but you don't get all the features and the plugins and the accessibility that most of the people that are excited about WordPress expect you to have. So you won't be able to really leverage the advantages that WordPress supposedly offers if you don't go out and get your own hosting account. Now that isn't a problem from a pricing perspective. You can find a lot of cheap web hosts from five to 10 or 20 bucks a month or whatever. Not a deal breaker by any means, but the problem is that the average person that's getting the advice doesn't know how to set up a web host. And there's quite a bit of configuration that needs to take place and there's a lot of moving parts that you need to have work together whenever you are deploying a website on a web host. And so that in itself can be a challenge. I'm not gonna get into the, all the specifics of what's challenging about that. If you've tried to do it then and you don't know how to go about it, then you know that there's a learning curve. The, the next thing is that once you do get your hosting in place, it's difficult to install and configure WordPress on your web server. Uh, again, not getting into all the specifics, but the average person that's looking for a website builder or an easy way to get a website online is just not gonna be versed in messing with configuration files and you know Apache and on and on. So, uh, that can be a hindrance for those people. The third thing is that now, if you can overcome those obstacles, you have to go out, register a domain name, and point that domain name back to your WordPress website or your WordPress blog. And that is simple. If you do it every day, if you don't do it every day, it can actually be a real pain. So you have all these people that are like, oh, it's so easy, watch this video, learn this, da 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 and I get into it sometimes with these people on YouTube. Recently, a, a guy was telling me, just look, just take these 10 steps. Well, 10 complicated steps can be awfully confusing to somebody whose focus is selling flowers at their flower shop or whatever. And it's just not, 
it's just not easy for that person to connect their domain name to their website. Uh, with Web Starts, we do that automatically, so you just go in, you type in your domain name, and we make all that magic happen in the background. There's no configuring that you need to do unless you're bringing a domain name that you already registered somewhere else, uh, and then it's very minimal. Uh, the next thing is that it's not flexible. A lot of people say, oh, it's so flexible, it does all these things. As long as you're taking the approach that it's a blog, then it does offer flexibility for a blog, but keep in mind a blog is just a string of posts, typically in text, and you can obviously upload images and videos and that sort of thing too, or, or at least upload them to YouTube and then share them through your WordPress. But you can't, you don't have the drag and drop, you can't create these unique layouts. You have to go out and you have to choose a theme and th this and that, and that means that if you want to customize anything, you need to be able to uh, no CSS, which is a coding language, you know, it's part of uh, what you need to know to code your own website. And for, again, the small business owner, they just aren't versed in that and they would have to go out and actually learn that to take advantage of uh, the this, this styling. So the fifth thing is that it's hard to use. And that kind of goes a lot right along with the fact that you need to know some code. The program itself is in PHP. Uh, if you want to style it, you'll need to know some CSS, and then if you want to install the plugins, you'll have to know how to download plugins, upload plugins, install plugins on your server, and that gives you all the little features you need, and it's technical, and technical is just something that the average person doesn't want to deal with and shouldn't have to, quite frankly. As technology improves, we should be making things easier, not more complicated. The sixth thing is that it's one-dimensional, and I've talked about this already, but you know, you can get a theme, you can get plugins, but at the end of the day, your site is going to be, is going to work within the framework of a blog. And that means that your posts are going to, uh, your, your, the, the whole site design is going to work within that PHP infrastructure. And you're going to have limitations on what you can do uh, with with that that blog basically how it can look how what it, it can be um, utilized for um, changing it updating it those sort of things you're going to have to work within that structure and it's going to provide some limitations the seventh problem i have with wordpress is that you go out you get a theme or whatever or you create your own theme but then you have to know html code probably some photoshop and you know create your own graphics that sort of thing but then you go out and you get a theme. That theme is not your unique theme. That theme is being shared by so many other websites. And even if you tweak that theme, it, it, you can't really fool a site visitor. If they come to your site, they can tell whether you've really invested some time into creating a unique design. And it's going to be difficult to convey the, the unique value of your product or service without that original design. So the eighth thing is that the features are difficult to install and manage. So if you do manage to get the, ins the uh, plugins installed, a lot of times those plugins will go out of date and then they'll be incompatible with new versions of WordPress. You'll find out about this the hard way. Uh, if you try to uh, change the settings of some of the plugins, you have to guess where to look for those plugins in the back end of WordPress. It's just really kind of a, a mess back there. They're not always under the plugin section. Sometimes they're under different sections. Uh, the platform is open source. And although I love open source stuff because it's like an open community, uh, our strengths are our weaknesses. And <clears throat> the weakness of open source is that anybody can come along and create a plugin. So you spend all this time configuring this plugin just to find out that it's been abandoned three years ago by some developer and it's not compatible with the cur current version of WordPress or it doesn't work or it's buggy or something like that. So basically because uh, open source means that people will create code for non-commercial purposes, there's no expectation that that code will necessarily work or no filter for that. The ninth problem I have with WordPress is that the search engine optimization or SEO that comes with WordPress and is largely touted by the WordPress community is tremendously overrated. And I can only say this based on my own experience. We've created pages for our company 
that were in strictly in HTML, and then we created pages that were in WordPress blogs to try to see which get better SEO. And I can tell you for whatever reason, the pages that we created in HTML perform better in the search engines. Now I suspect the reason that is, or that happens is because uh, HTML is more difficult. Anybody can set up a WordPress blog. You can create a bot basically to create spammy content for the search engine. So I think search engines like Google have caught on to that and they're just not as likely to give as much link juice and that sort of thing from WordPress blogs because they know it's the content can just be what's called uh, link spam or uh, link bait. Uh, the tenth and the final reason that I'm going to share with you today is just what I've been hitting on, which is WordPress is for blogs. It's not for building a unique website. That means that when it comes to making money, which for me, that's the pinnacle of running an online business. At the end of the day, I'm running a business and I have a website because I expect it to provide me with a return on investment. If you don't expect to have a return on investment and it's a hobby, then fine, use WordPress. But if you do have an expectation that you're gonna get a return on investment, then you need to be able to get in there, you need to be able to update and control every aspect of your website. Everything from the layout to the marketing statements that you have on there, you need to be able to add forms, you need to be able to capture lead data from your clients. You need to be able to look at your tracking and then go back and adjust the things, you know, like maybe even the images that you have on your site and see if you can get more performance uh, by moving something to the left or to the right. If you're using this, the a WordPress blog, you do have some of those options, but basically they all, again, take place in the context of a blog framework. So uh, most of those, if you go out and you look at them, you're gonna see that most WordPress blogs just look the same and they're really not geared to do business or to, to, to create an online transaction, capture lead data, that sort of thing. There are some plugins you can implement to do that. So before people go crazy in the blog or in the comment section, I did want to you know, say that I do understand there's a lot of workarounds that come with WordPress and there, there can be value in it, but it's just not the best way to get your website built online. I really believe that Web Starts is the best way to create a website if you're serious about your business. Uh, just because we take all the things that I just talked about with WordPress and we provide solutions for them. And obviously, no matter what way you choose to get your website online, you're go going to face um, challenges and it's going to be work. With Web Starts, if you just want um, a, a run-of-the-mill website that looks like everybody else's stuff, then it's, Web Starts probably isn't for you because Web Starts was created by me and by our staff to be something that you create a totally unique design and that you can really present your products and services uh, in a way that they'll actually sell and you'll win cu customers and, and grow your business online. So that's it for today's video. Don't forget to visit webstarts.com to build your own website and feel free to leave comments uh, down below in the comment section.